Welcome, everybody, to the NFL Presidential Address for Week 3. I am your host, Lawrence Presman, co-founder of Wager Talk Media, owner of Sports Memo, Wager Talk, and the Goal Sheet. And trust me, guys, we know sports betting. On this show, I'm going to look at every single game on the board. We're in a pass in a few of them, but on a whole, you're going to get betting information for about 80% of the games coming up in week three. And at the end of the show, we will give out a teaser of the week. So stay with us all the way to the end. It's only going to be about 15 minutes, and it should be a lot of fun. Let's start right off the bat with a Thursday night game. And with no, uh, I apologize to say this, but I got nothing for you guys in this game. I do have a client play out for the customers uh, that you can get over at wagertalk.com, but I don't have any other bets to give out. So let's move straight into Sunday's card. And we're going to start right off the bat with the L.A. Chargers uh, on the road facing the Steelers. And I do want to point out that the Chargers are actually staying on the East Coast uh, this week, which is a very big deal. Many years ago, one of the best betting angles out there was betting these West Coast teams traveling east and playing in that 1 p.m. game. That is no longer a really good winning betting angle, especially with a lot of these teams staying out east. Now, everything I'm talking about here depends on Herbert playing. And as of now, he is probable, so I am going to assume he plays. For the record, if he plays, and I think he will, I like the Chargers. If he doesn't play, I absolutely love the under in this game. So the under has already been bet heavily. 37 and a half was the opening number. It's now down to 35 and a half. And I agree with this play, but I actually prefer betting on the Chargers here. And they're and they are also taking some money. It was plus two and a half yesterday. We're taping it on Tuesday. It is now plus two. And I wouldn't be surprised if this game goes all the way down to plus one. With that said, I just can't buy into this Pittsburgh team. I think their market value is way too high right now. Yeah, two and oh. Way to go, Pittsburgh. Outstanding stuff, yet they've shown absolutely nothing. They do have a killer defense. Absolutely lights out, period. But who have they played? Uh, No one. And in the second half against Denver, they looked, as the cool kids say, mid. So although I do think they have a killer defense, And I think mostly it's their pass rush that is so good. I think their defense can be had, and especially on the ground. This Chargers team, they're second in the league in rushing and at just a hair under 200 yards per game. They are averaging 5.7 yards a carry. And this is what we expected with a Harbor coach team. This running game is going to be their bread and butter, and this is where I think they can dominate. From an offensive perspective, We have a much better QB uh, for the Chargers. We have a much better running game for the Chargers. And don't be sleeping on the Chargers defense, who frankly are just as good as Pittsburgh's. Neither of these teams have really played anyone. So give me the better offense with two big-time edge rushers in Mack and Bosa getting points. I like the Chargers here. If one team is down by five, guys, if one team is down by five, two to go and has the ball, which team do you think has a better chance of making a comeback? Here's a clue. It's not Pittsburgh. Take the Chargers plus two, and I leave on the under. Now we turn our attention to Chicago, going into Indianapolis. Chicago's plus one and a half. The total here is 43. And let me start by saying, I want to apologize to all Bears fans. I was right. Your offense stinks. I was right. Your coach stinks. I was right. Your pizza stinks. But I was wrong about your defense. They are freaking lights out right now. And don't forget, this was the number one rush D in football last year. They played great against Houston last week. So here we have a total of 42 and a half, 43. And one of these teams has scored a grand total of, well, one touchdown in two full games. And they haven't exactly been playing the 85 Bears or the Ray Lewis Ravens. Let's assume they double that amazing output and throw a field goal in there to boot. 17 points. 
That means the Colts would have to put up 25 for this game to go over. That is a big ask for a Colts team playing against the Chicago D. And frankly, it's just a big an ask for Chicago to put up 17. Here is what we know. The Bears will hold teams to under 20 points per game on average and will score under 17 points per game on average. We know the Bears are going to continue running the ball. We know they're going to continue throwing five-yard passes. And we know they're going to continue needing all three downs to move the chains. We also know that Indy is not some offensive juggernaut. They only put up 10 points against Green Bay. Now, one might say, well, maybe Indy doesn't have a great D. Who cares? They're playing the Bears. This is a stone cold under. Lots more to get through. We got to look at Houston and Minnesota. But before we get into that, guys, we have an incredible promo up for you in NBA and NHL. It is our early bird promotion. It is $595 for the entire season. And everybody knows me as an NHL better. I'm one of the best NHL betters alive. But with that said, my NBA, I'm up 96 units of profit, betting three units of play over the last two years. My NBA has been on point for two full years. I expect to have an outstanding NBA season. Guys, you must be playing my NHL. You must be playing my NBA. If you plan on playing me for the entire season, which I highly suggest, bite the bullet, take the chance, do it now, save a ton of money. It's only $595 each. Okay, let's go. Houston, minus two and a half versus Minnesota, a total of 45. This is a tough game for me. I just don't know how real the Vikings are. And Houston did not play well at all against the Bears. I'll make this short. Pass. With that said, if you do plan on betting Houston, their center is questionable. If he does not play Scruggs, Juice Scruggs, do not bet Houston. And Addison and Jefferson are both questionable for Minnesota. If they don't play, do not bet Minnesota. This is a perfect stay away game. Now we turn our attention to the New York Giants going into Cleveland. The Giants are plus six and a half. The total in this game is 38 and a half. And I'll tell you right off the bat, I'm looking to play both the under in this game and the New York Giants. Now, as of this minute, money is coming in on the Giants. Uh, this line will drop. I actually think we're going to see a five uh, when it all said and done. And I agree with that. And frankly, I like them at five. I like them at four. This Giants team should have won uh, against Washington. They lost that game because they didn't have a kicker. That is literally why they lost that football game. Now, I know Washington is one of the worst defensive units in the league. I get that. But Cleveland might be missing both Garrett and Ward and Cleveland, although they stop teams from a yardage perspective, they do allow for points. One thing I really like about the Giants is their defense. They are running an aggressive scheme. They are blitzing. They are in the backfield. I think they're going to give Watson fits. No joke. I think Watson is going to need a massage right after this game. So if you know of anyone who's into giving him massages, let him know. Let's bottom line this. Neither team can score consistently. Both teams will be in the bottom half of the league in points. Both teams will also be in the top half of the league in points allowed. The Giants so far, is aver they've averaged 12 points per game. 12. And none of those games were against this Cleveland D. And this Cleveland team has averaged 17 and a half points a game, which I think is too high for them too. This game has horrible written all over it. 17-12 with five field goals seem about right to me. Take the New York Giants and under the total. Philadelphia against New Orleans? I got nothing on this game. Kudos to New Orleans, though. 90-something points in two games. Kubiak kicking ass as offensive coordinator. Big plays all over the field. Derek Carr yet to make a mistake. With that said, doesn't it feel like they might come down to earth this week? 
I'm worried. I'm going to pass on this game because Philadelphia is a bit of a disaster right now. I mean, what the hell were their coach thinking on Monday night? Move along. Denver plus seven against Tampa Bay. Move along. Green Bay plus two and a half against Tennessee. I love the spot for Tennessee. Now, there are threes out there. Uh, I'm going to take the two and a half because, well, I like the Titans here. I love betting on teams who lose their star player in their first game. I love betting on them in basketball. I love betting on them in hockey and baseball and football. But what I equally love betting is against them on the second game. Now, we saw Green Bay win against Indianapolis, which covered that first angle that we were talking about. Now we're going to see Green Bay come down to earth and lose covering the second angle I am talking about. This Titans team, no joke, could be and frankly should be 2-0 and on the year. Levis has had a couple of major brain cramps. These are fixable issues, and we did not see them from him last year. Their defense, Tennessee's, have played great in both games. And this team, they are able to score. Although the Titans have not played really good offensive teams right now, they're number one in the entire league in yards allowed so far. They're a really hard team to run against. And running is what Green Bay is going to try to do. Green Bay is going to run, 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 run. And that walks right into Tennessee's strength. Take the Titans, minus two and a half against Green Bay. Carolina, plus five and a half against Las Vegas, a total of 38. Lots and lots of money have come in on the Panthers since Bryce Young has been benched. Oh, to be young. Horrible spot for this Vegas team, though. After a huge win against the Ravens, uh, this is going to be tough to get up for. And I'm telling you guys, most teams are going to sleep on this Panther team. they are going to be a team that will be overlooked. Now, that doesn't mean they're going to do anything with that because they stink. I just don't like the spot for Vegas. What I do want to say is one thing we can count on with Andy Dalton. We can count on two passing touchdowns. We can count on two interceptions. We can count on one of those interceptions being a pick six. That's pretty much how he works. It's been clockwork for years and their end. I also think we're going to see a breath of fresh air in this offense for Carolina. No joke, guys. I like over the total in this game. Call me crazy. Okay, Miami, Seattle. I know. Why am I passing so much? What the hell am I supposed to do with this game? Who knows what Miami will look like after the roster is injured. And honestly, I don't trust the Seattle team. We saw the same thing with the Seattle team last year. Go out and beat San Fran, beat the best teams in the league, lose to the worst teams in the league. This game is a pass. Now we turn our attention to Detroit. Minus two and a half against Arizona. A total of 51 and a half. Bet up to 52 and a half. There are two and a halves out there, guys, and I like the Lions, so I'm going to look at this game as a two and a half game and not a three game. There's a lot, of, lot, and I mean a lot of money pouring in on the over. And why shouldn't it be? We've seen Kyla Murray and this Arizona offense put up 41 points against the Rams, which was spectacular, and we all know what Detroit could do. With that said, be careful. Amon Ra is questionable. So is Williams. If those two people don't play, I think we're going to see Detroit rely heavily on the run. I actually think that that favors Detroit. I, I love Dan Campbell, and I love this Detroit offense. But Dan, if you're listening to me, and you should be, as I am the Prez, you have the best O-line in football for running. You have running backs. Run the freaking ball. Anyway, calm down, Prez. Bottom line here, I think we will get this game over the total. I think Amon Ra will play. I also think Williams will play. And I think we're going to see a game somewhere around 31 to 24. 
I would not be surprised if this game is the highest scoring game on the board, but I don't think it'll be. I think it'll be the second highest scoring game. The number one highest scoring game is coming up next. I like Detroit minus two and a half, and I also like over the total, but I prefer Detroit. Now, the number one scoring game of the week, a game that I think will be in the 60s, a game that I will release to my clients, a game that will be watched by more people than any other game this week, a game that is being hosted in Dallas, a game that has the O and two Ravens in it. Let's take apart Baltimore minus one against Dallas. Now, money has been pouring in on Baltimore over the last two days. Started out at plus one, now minus one. Why? Why is money pouring into Baltimore? Well, let's look at that without sarcasm. That was sarcastic. Is it because Baltimore beat Kansas City and then followed it up with the destruction of the awful Raiders team? Nah, they didn't. Maybe it's because they have played two awesome defenses. Yeah, they didn't. Especially in the fourth quarter when the game... Uh, maybe because they, they're they playing awesome D. Yeah, they're not playing awesome D. Especially in the fourth quarter when the game is on the line. Or maybe it's because Dallas looked like crap for the first time at home in 17 games. Yeah, that must be it. I don't understand this line move. This Dallas team has lost one game in 16 at home, and they uh, and they played a ton of great teams along the way. Regardless of how bad Dallas looked last Sunday, they have what I think is the best offense in all of football. And now we're going to get them at an extremely low market value. How, do you really think this line was going to be 48, 49 points? This is 52 and a half written all over it. Although I've been touting the Dallas defense and last year they were the fifth best in the league. They are showing leakage, guys. The Saints obliterated them. And even the crappy Browns put up 17. I think Baltimore is good. Don't get me wrong. But I also think they might have even worse defensive issues than Dallas right now. They lost some very important pieces from last year. And they have shown us nothing so far on D. KC was able to move the ball on them. Vegas was able to put up 26. Vegas, 26, with a Gardner at quarterback. I am convinced we're getting 30 points from Dallas here, and we know Baltimore is going to get us a minimum of 21. This game is indoors. It's on a fast track. I think we see this game get close to the 60s. I would not be surprised if the final score was 31-27, give or take. I think this is the highest game on the board. Take the over and take Dallas. Okay, breathe, Prez. Remember, guys, huge early bird special in NBA and NHL, $595 for the entire season. I, I have built my reputation in hockey, and my NBA over the last two years has been unbelievable. I'm up 96 units of profit in NBA over the last two years. So don't sleep on that promotion. Let's look at San Francisco against the Rams. Minus seven for San Fran, total here of 45 and a half. Now, I would not want to play San Fran after they lose a game. Not now, and not with this football team, and not based on how incredible they actually looked week one against a good Jets team. This game, the game they played in Minnesota, it was an anomaly. And we've seen this happen before. Three years ago, I think they'd won six or seven in a row. Chicago had not won a game all year. They went into Chicago, lost that game. These games happen. This San Fran team has not lost two games in a row in their last 14 games. This Rams offense is decimated with injuries, and it's not their fault. They can't do anything about it. Cup is out. Nakua is out. Their O-line, a shell of themselves, and maybe the worst in the entire league. They don't have much of a run game, and Stafford isn't mobile. They just won't be able to do a damn thing against San Francisco. As for the Rams, D, they are young. They are fast. But come on, man. They are horrible. And San Fran should have a field day. I know. Rams off of a terrible loss in a division game. Playing at home with a great coach and a veteran QB. I get it. 
These favorites, San Fran, specific, this, these favorites as in San Fran, are usually terrible, terrible bets. But I just think we have the best team in football here playing against, well, nobody. I don't know how else you can bet this game. Take San Fran minus seven. And there are sevens out there. Last game we're going to talk about, Kansas City and Atlanta. Kansas City minus four and a half on the road. Total here, 46 and a half. Pacheco, out. Out till week seven. Edwards Alaire isn't playing either. This is huge. If you watch the game against Baltimore, it was Pacheco that carried the team. He carried the team throughout the playoff run last year as well, not only by running the ball better than most running backs, but also by setting up the pass. This is a major loss. Plus, the bottom line here is this is a horrible, 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 horrible spot for Kansas City. This Kansas City team just played two gigantic games against massive rivals in Baltimore and the Bengals. Now they go on the road, play in a, against a non-division, a non-conference team. This Kansas City team are damn lucky to be 2-0 and and not 0-2. The Ravens played really well against them. They put up 99 more yards than Kansas City did. And they missed winning the game or potentially winning the game by a toenail. As for the Bengals, KC was one pass interference penalty away from losing that game. There is a lot to like here about this Falcons team. First off, KC, as we spoke about, is in a horrible spot. But I also think that last minute comeback by Atlanta against Philly will give this team a ton of confidence moving forward. I Love that we are getting more than a field goal here without Pacheco, with the spot being bad, with the team not playing great, with him with Casey being on the road. Take Atlanta plus the four and a half. And guys, sprinkle a little bit on the money line. As for your teaser of the week, take Chicago up, Cincinnati down, 6.2 team teaser. Lots of love, everybody. It's going to be a great week of betting. Thank you for watching the NFL Presidential Address.